Alright guys, we got another lesson planned for today. <clears throat> um, what you're looking at here is, this is the Modus Ultra, and uh, we're on voltage, and we're going to look at a car that does not run, and it has cam codes. <clears throat> and uh, I'm pretty sure, let's see, this was last year, I'm pretty sure it was a Dodge Dakota or something something Chrysler and so what we did was we have the yellow channel 1 is going to be on the uh, crank sensor so naturally it's you know four pulses a little gap and then you've got four more pulses and a little gap and it's following all the way through you can see four pulses gap four more and uh, it's going to be like that all the way down. So what you're looking for is right here on the edge, this leading edge, is going to be the beginning of, say, an ignition timing cycle, right? So this leading edge would be, if, it, if the timing was correct, the leading edge of this yellow channel 1 should match up with the leading edge of this green channel 2. And green channel 2 is hooked to a cam sensor and uh, so basically you can see that this green channel does not line up with this yellow channel and same here this edge of this green channel should line up to the edge of this yellow channel Whoop! let's go back here and uh, while this is taking a second to load I'm going to tell you that uh, when you don't have these lining up you know, let me just take t channel 2 down. You can come over here and you can mess with a lot of settings. Like, I don't know if you just saw that, but I took the channel and I'm moving it up or down because if you see here when they overlap, the colors are kind of similar, so it's a little bit harder to see and compare the data. So right there I've got it staggered. And, uh, you know, the, the most important part is you're never going to be able to understand the information on a lab scope unless you have your scale and your sweep and all these settings down here at the bottom perfectly uh, dialed in for what you're doing you know like um, for instance I have my sweep turned up to 200 milliseconds you could turn it up even faster but on something like this this is plenty I mean you can see that my screen is full of data it's pretty easy to read I've even got my scale all the way up on 10 volts and um, it doesn't even need to be that high but I like to see a little bit of area above and below so that I can sort of tell like if there's like a voltage spike or a voltage drop anywhere anything that can give me more information I consider useful so uh, let's go back here and look at this we're basically just you know we've recorded an, like an attempt to start the vehicle something like I don't know eight or ten seconds and we basically when we're analyzing the data we just scroll back here like this and just pick a random spot to analyze so as you can see here we've got these lines right here that we can use to sort of measure stuff so I'm gonna set it right on the edge of the green tracer right there and I'm going to set this one right on the edge of the yellow, which is right there. All right, so you can see that there's a gap. And what that gap tells me is that there is 100% sure a timing problem. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go back to the customer and say, hey, we need to pull the valve cover or, you know, hey, we need to uh, maybe do something like remove the timing cover or on something like this that I've done a bunch of times I'll just go ahead and pull the trigger and say hey you know you have a timing chain issue like look at this you know you come over here and set that tracer right on the leading edge of channel 2 and set this one on the leading edge of channel 1 and uh, you can see there's a gap there I mean it's pretty obvious timing chain problem and you know some vehicles you have like a reluctor wheel on the cam that will move and so you can say hey look you know there's some possibilities here that it could be 
cam train related or you may have like a like a Ford Taurus like a 2002 Ford Taurus where the reluctant wheel on the crank can move you know because it's pressed on there and so you can tell them hey look we're going to take a look at this first and see if there's a crack in it something like that I mean when you're diagnosing a no start this is pretty much the first thing you should be doing is checking you know I mean of course you're going to check for fuel spark and compression but timing's also up there because nowadays if you don't have it any trigger on your uh, like if you go to like put a noid light on a uh, fuel injector and you don't have any noid light flash you can check for like cam signal or, or crank signal you know or lack thereof so to speak and a lot of times if the timing's off like this it won't even send a signal so you can sort of you know rule things out whether or not it's a computer related issue or anything like that so I mean this is a good habit to get into when diagnosing a no-start condition. Check the timing, check the timing, check the timing. You know, I mean, it's it's common sense really nowadays because it's so easy. Like, when you go back here, like, we'll say guided component tests, and we'll pick a vehicle that would closely resemble that data I just showed you. Chrysler, you know, we'll pick a 2001. Actually, let's go back. Let's pick a 2007. Dodge truck, and uh, let's see here. I guess it's not going to be under same engine right there. All right, so you come in here and you're going to go to fuel injection. You know, like let's look at the crank sensor, and you go to signature test. And so it's going to fire up the lab scope like this, but you want to look at the data that it offers before you start looking at this. So you click there, and it tells you. Like, look at this. It tells you you're going to hook the yellow cable of your lab scope to the crank sensor signal wire. And the black, you can just clip it to the ground, whether it be the battery or, you know, an earth ground on the side of the engine, something like that. And it shows you on the connector which wire you want. Pin 3, back probing the harness side of the connector. You know, you're going to back probe towards this, you know, towards the sensor and you pick this far side wire CKP signal and uh, if you're not sure which wire is the signal wire you can always you know pick the far right side and if you have a 5 volt supply with the key on engine off then you know that the other wire on the other side is the signal wire and sometimes actually most of the time now they even show you what a good waveform looks like you know and so you know what you're looking for and if you have like say like 80% of a good waveform and then all of a sudden there's like a weird spot in there then a lot of times it means that you have some sort of damage to your reluctor wheel or a uh, like a little bit of debris on the tip of the reluctor wheel or bent you know tooth on it something like that so you can always pull the sensor out and look at the reluctor wheel and turn the engine over and, and either rule it out or rule it in as a common problem possible issue you know and so there's so many things you can, there's so much info you can get off this, you know. And we'll go back and we'll look at cam sensor, you know. Signature is what you're always going to click on. Because the signature is basically what are you looking for while it's running, right? And it shows you on cam sensor. It's the same type of connector. You're going to grab the, you know, pin 3. And that's what the cam is going to look like. And if you noticed earlier in the video, this is the exact uh, like waveform of what I just showed you. You know, you've got three, two, one, three, two, one, repeating, and uh, then it goes one, two, and so like you know that these at trailing edges right here are supposed to match up to the uh, edges of the crank signature, and. This data is so priceless when it comes to diagnosing stuff because you can't you can't just google this information right here. I mean, you can and you find videos like mine, but a lot of this information comes from actually spending a bunch of time lab scoping, you know? And I mean, you can use this for anything, really. I mean, look, it's got PCM relays, throttle control, all sorts of stuff, you know? I mean, when I got this lab scope, I really just spent a whole bunch of time messing with it to try to figure out what to do to uh, understand it better, you know. 
and I'll actually uh, do another video on settings of it so you can understand what you need to start with when you're trying to record something. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help you guys out the best I can. Thanks.